What's up guys, we're back again. Episode two, getting this thing sorted, ready to compete for the rest of the year. So I'll get this exhaust wired up under the car, get it back on the ground, clean up this block, and then we'll give it a gurney out, and then we can start looking at prepping it for paint, getting it cleaned up, so let's get at it. Righto guys, we're all wire brushed. Um, so pretty much at this stage, it's just time for a really big degrease and a big gurney wash down. Uh, I've got most of the studs out of the head. I left that short one at the back there. And the one that's stuck in the manifold, which is also a short one, is for the front on this part. And I think I'm gonna leave those. I don't know, maybe I'll just cut down. Actually, I think I will. It's gonna be a lot easier with the 12 point nuts. And the nut thread on the new studs is a different pitch, so. I think I will just take them out, but um, the new studs, I am going to have to cut them down for those two because I think they're going to be too long. That's why those two have been shortened, obviously, uh, is because of the design of the manifold. If they are left at full length, uh, the manifold won't do up to the head. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. Anyway, well, um, I'll just get that one out. But uh, anyway, those of you wondering what I'm using, this is actually a stud remover, really handy little tool. Uh, it's just a cam lock. You can turn it around either way, uh, but as you can see, stick your stud through the hole, the cam lock locks onto the stud, and then you just use your ratchet to undo it. Bit hard in real tight spots in a few places, but uh, this tool is very, very handy. Um, it does damage the threads a bit, so we only really use it for getting studs out, but uh, nonetheless, it's a lot quicker than, you know, chucking a nut on, putting another nut on, locking it up, trying to undo it, and then putting those nuts on the next stud. Uh, that's a pretty long process. This actually shortens it quite a bit, so. Pretty cool little tool. One of those life-changing tools. But anyway, we'll get that out, and then I'll plug them up, Give it a wash, let it dry, mask it up, flick a coat of paint over it. Also guys, my apologies about the time-lapse footage. I don't know why, but the camera keeps just going out of focus. I, I, I don't know why, it's really annoying me though. But uh, yeah, my apologies for that one. It's too late to try to go contain it. A generation fueled by creation. We live lives on a small screen nation. We control the airwaves, no negotiation. I refuse to think we need saving. Something good will come from creation. And when we think that the world is too Righto guys, <clears throat> already looking way better. That's a much, looking much nicer now, so. Now we'll uh, wait for that to dry out, give it a heat with some brake clean, try and prep it as best we can, and uh, just mask up the head and just give everything just a quick coat of black. So, should go without saying, but obviously with this coat of paint, I'm not looking to um, set the world on fire, it's not a show, show car paint job or anything. I just want to seal the block. I just want to put some paint on it so that it's sealed and protected from corrosion. That's all, all it's really going to be. So, I'll mask up the head and Maybe mask up a few other things, but I'm not super worried about, uh, you know, getting over spray on the bay and stuff like that. It's it's not gonna freaking matter. But it is what it is, but uh, yeah. We'll let it dry, brake clean it, push it right out as far as you can. Give it a quick lick of paint. Happy days, happy days. So, um, while I'm waiting for that to dry and do that, I suppose we'll get started on cleaning up this manifold.
guys, so we'll let that exhaust manifold soak in that degreaser. I end up getting his screamer pipe and doing the same thing. I gave it a big wire brush and I've got it out there soaking in degreaser as well. Uh, because where it was wrapped up in that exhaust wrap, it was also getting very, very corroded. So um, they can soak, we'll give them a big gurney off soon. And then they'll be starting to get ready to look at getting painted. So I've got the oven fired up. Um, so we've got it cranking 250 degrees. Just turn it up as high as it goes pretty much and let it bake this ceramic paint on. Um, Crap, we'll just check on if we've got enough ceramic paint. Do we have it? So we just use the Jupicolor high heat stuff. Not a super big fan of Jupicolor, but um, it's all we can get locally. So it's what we use, but yeah. We've got enough there. So spray that on, bake the crap out of it. Um, and while we're waiting for those, I'll probably start getting our exhaust housing for the turbo ready. So one of the sensors that we will be adding to the car is an exhaust gas pressure or a EMAP, exhaust manifold absolute pressure, um, which I'll show you how we're gonna do that. Um, it is a well thought out. Uh, you gotta be very careful with it, obviously, because the exhaust gases are one, dirty, which means sensors don't particularly like that, and two, obviously very hot. So you gotta do something to combat both of those issues, and I'll show you as that goes in the car, but it means that we wanna put a 1.8 MPT port in the housing. Now these cast exhaust housings are thick enough that you can just drill and tap them. You don't particularly need to weld anything. So we'll get the housing off the turbo, drill and tap it for a 1.8 port, and then I'll also paint the uh, turbine housing as well and uh, bake it too. So we'll get it ready. Guys, we've got some paint cooking in the oven. Yee ha! Look at that. It's actually come out not too bad. I'm excited to see it once it's all baked on. So that'll be good. So I just pre-baked it uh, before you saw it on the time lapse there. I uh, just pre-baked it, got it nice and hot. Bit of brake clean, bit of paint, bake it back on. Sweet ass. We'll revisit that in another couple of hours. Um, so in the meantime, yeah, we'll get some turbo housings and stuff sorted and uh, start looking at getting some paint on this engine block. Not too bad, really, for a quick old pretty up. Not too bad at all. It's enough just to seal it up, which is all we want. Just don't want it to corrode anymore, and it's fine. Yeehaw. So looking at this turbo housing where I'm going to put this port for this EMAP, um, I decided I'm probably just going to leave it for now. I'll prep and paint the housing. I'm also going to do the core. I'll mask up and paint the core. So I do have a, um, a new Turbo Smart beanie to go on this turbo um, so we'll have like a heat uh, beanie but I really want to paint it just to protect it from corrosion uh, they still have are prone to corrosion underneath those beanies if you're not sealing properly so I want to paint it but because the RBs and the turbos being on the passenger side and basically the, the start of the volute being really close to the engine cover um, I don't want to drill and tap this EMAP port until I've sort of got the manifold on the car and I know exactly where the turbo is going to sit and I can make sure I put it in a good spot that's not going to be in the way and not going to clash with anything. So um, <clears throat> it's not going to be a big deal just to drill it and tap it after it's painted. And it's going to hold us up to try and wait until the manifold's on to drill and tap it and then paint it. So I'm just going to prep it. We're going to paint it, do the same thing as the manifold. We'll paint them in uh, ceramic and we'll bake them. Um, and then we'll drill and tap it once the manifold's sort of on and it's a bit closer to being ready to go. But uh, anyway. It's another job out of the way. <clears throat> so we'll give that paint a few hours to dry properly, um, a few hours to go off. In the meantime, let's see the other stuff we've got to start doing. Anyway, guys, today's Wednesday. I'm pretty happy to just power through tonight, um, do a fair bit of night work tonight, try and get this thing mostly together. And I pretty much want to have it to a point by the end of the night that tomorrow we just move on to our fabrication and wiring. 
Um, so, you know, I pretty much want to have this all back together, sensors sorted and in, and um, maybe even start on the wiring tonight if we get there. I want all the lines all made and everything done, and then start on the fabrication um, tomorrow is the plan. But we'll see how we go. Right, we're all masked up on the housing and the core, ready for some bake and some paint to protect them from corrosion. So once our manifold's finished baking, which shouldn't be too long now, um, rip it out and start looking at getting it on here. For now, I'll probably get the studs in, um, just so that we can, as soon as we get it out of the oven, we can test fit it, see which studs need to be cut down and how much they need to be cut down, because the new gasket is quite a bit thicker. So we've got our Perma Seal MLSR exhaust manifold gaskets, and these are a five layer multi-layer steel. So um, they're quite a bit, a fair bit thicker than the gasket that came off it, so I don't know. We'll, we'll chuck the studs on with these, just test fit the manifold, and who knows, maybe we'll get super lucky. Maybe, we'll find out. Firstly, we'll clean up this head surface a bit though. Make sure it's squeaky clean. All right, so these are the splash guards we're gonna be running. They're from Boost Stock, they're the short version. I'm pretty sure with the RB26 covers, we could have run the full length versions, but these are the ones that Brad bought. Either way, um, these should plenty, be plenty enough, hopefully. Either way, uh, with these on, it's not gonna hurt, but hopefully, between these and the way we're gonna change this catch can setup, we can actually start running this sump at the full eight liter capacity that it has. Uh, and take advantage of that oil because never a bad thing when not with an RB to have that extra oil in there. Woohoo! Look at that. After a bit of a bake, come up like a bloody brand new one. How good. It's gonna look great. So we'll see how that goes. See how it stands the test of time. I've painted up our housing core and I also did the wastegate in the end as well. I just um I masked up the dome check the dome and uh, actually painted the wastegate because it really copped quite a bit of that fire extinguisher as well so it won't hurt to have it uh, nice and protected from corrosion so I'm just waiting for these to flash off um, once I go touch dry I'll unmask them and then they can go in the oven and uh, get baked for a couple of hours but um, all looking good uh, so yeah <laughs> anyway uh, as you can see this is great and we've got our retarder back here so as you saw from episode one, my biggest concern or gripe with this whole project and why it waited so long to start it was because I was waiting for, to have a literal consignment note for this till I knew it was on the way so that I knew that we would be able to get this done and tuned before Brad has to take it to compete. Uh, and that's why I waited to the very last minute when they gave us a consignment. We can just go straight tune it. Straight tune it. Yeah, straight tune the drift car. So anyway, that's what I did. And you know, I explained all that last episode, so. Our dyno's just arrived. It's two, quarter past two on a Wednesday afternoon, and this car's due to be picked up on Sunday by Brad. Um, <clears throat> anyway, uh, to make a long story long, I'm just gonna have to explain it because it's the only way it makes sense. So you've got the retarder unit here. It bolts to the actual chassis on two bearing cases on each end of the shaft, and that's how, that's the only thing that bolts to the chassis. And then the actual retarder bolts to a arm, um, which operates a load cell. And that's the only way the actual center of the retarder bolts to anything. So these are the only threaded holes in the whole unit. So when we sent it down, Rex put a lot of effort into making a big metal crate, make sure it was gonna be very well protected, uh, very well sealed and, and not get more damage than it already was. And these bolts that bolt this arm, which operate the load cell, are a very specific size and thread. And we couldn't source any more of them locally. So we couldn't actually get any just to bolt it to this crate. The only ones we had were the ones that the dyno actually uses in its operation. And um, God forbid, last thing we needed to do was lose them. We really didn't want to send them down, but there was no other choice at the time except for to bolt the, use them to bolt the retarder to the, to the steel crate and send it off. So because of our uh, apprehension with doing so, when we sent it off, we were very specific about those bolts being very important that those bolts make it back to us with the retarder because they're very important to the operation or to the dyno as a whole. We can't use it without them. Um, when it got down to them and they called us saying that they had received it, once again, very specific, those bolts need to come back. And even the other day when they called Rex to say that they were finally boxing it up to get it back to us and putting it in a crate to get it back to us, Rex once again was very specific and very, very, very careful and adamant about the fact that those bolts that were sent down with it 
have to make it back to us. They have to come back to the with us with the retarder because we need them to get the dyno back in operation. And sure enough, it's rocked up and they're not here. So we've got no bolts. We can um, we can put the bearing carriers on it and get it back in the pit, but we can't actually bolt that arm to the retarder that actually operates the uh, load cell, which means we can't actually use the dyno at all. So anyway, it's a bit of a um, sticky pants moment because we're already this far through doing this. And uh, we're not going to have a dyno for, I don't know, uh, we don't know when till it's um, <laughs> quarter past two on a Wednesday afternoon. Uh, and we don't have bolts for this thing and it's going to get picked up on Sunday, so. <sighs> bang, 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 bang. At least this looks good, right? Anyway, to say that this has been the most stressful two months of my life to date, you'd probably be pretty right on the money. <laughs> uh, yep, this sucks. Anyway, we're already committed. There's nothing else we can do now except for just finish it. So we'll just, we'll keep on trucking along. We'll fingers crossed we get some bolts to get this dyno back together. There's really, yeah, what else? What else do you do? Let's go, let's get it. Right, oh guys, so I test fitted the manifold with our two short, or what were the short ones, and it does fit with the gasket. So we are good to go, people. So all new studs in the head. Happy days. Um, just gonna do another once over tighten up this engine mount and basically just make sure there's nothing else that I want to be doing in here before the manifold goes back in. But apart from that, uh, we're pretty much ready for the manifold to go back in. Righto, boys and girls, that's her. It's amazing the difference that the 12 points nuts make to actually just working with this setup. That was so much easier than getting it out. But um, still, on the two real short ones, the front and the rear, where the runners come straight over the bolt holes, did have to make this custom spanner. <laughs> to uh to get at them but nonetheless it did work and it did the job and they're all tight and that's all on there so it's a huge leap forward so uh it's just about time to get our housing and core and everything out of the oven all right guys so here from our little array of goodies um is where we're gonna get everything from to do all of everything we've got to do so obviously like i talked about brand new oil and water feeds an braided uh oil feed water feed and water return uh, which would be happening. I'll remake those. There's nothing too special about that. Uh, we're going to do the return at a hard line, which I've been talking about. We've got all our fittings here. A uh, huge shout out to Raceworks, by the way, guys. Um, everything will be sleeved, heat sleeved. Going to do some uh, heat protection uh, while we're going through it. But we've also got our Haltech uh, case uh, IACV. So this is actually a GM LS IACV in a Haltech little thing. So. That's pretty easy to put in line, and when I did the original loom, you guys know that I put the plug in there for that. So as well as that, we've got our EMAP set up, which I'll go through when we put that in the car, and we're also going to put a turbine speed sensor in for the Pulsar Turbo. We can keep an eye on exactly what sort of RPM our turbo is doing. Not only that, but I'm also going to put a intake air temperature sender pre-cooler, as well as one that's post-cooler, so that we've got uh, data for the actual temperature drop over the, the intercooler there. So, fair bit of data going on, uh, to try and make sure we use the most of what this Motec has to offer. So our core housing and gate have finished baking. I've just uh, turned the oven on, I'm just gonna leave them in there for a bit, but they're coming up pretty nice, so that's looking real good. So they're nearly ready to start dummying stuff up, but at least with the manifold there and the flange there, uh, it's still a fairly good indication of um, for our lines at the very least. I'm pretty happy to just make our lines knowing or having the assumption of where the turbo is going to be with the manifold there, so. And like I said, guys, we've got our brand new Raceworks turbo beanie here. Um, for anyone wondering, we are Raceworks dealers now, same turbo smart as well. Uh, all of this will be going up on the store very shortly. Uh, if you need anything, um, feel free to just shoot us an email. Obviously it takes a long time to add these things to the store piece by piece. It's a very long, timely process and I'm super glad that Liam's helping us out now, uh, which has been great. But um, yeah, if you need anything, hit us up. We can get it if it's not on the store, but yeah, Raceworks, Turbo Smart, uh, yeah, an array of new suppliers going up on the store soon. So guys, we've got a whole, <laughs> I just bought like a, how much did I get? Like 15 meters of this 12 mil heat sleeve. It's a perfect size for AN4, so basically the entire oil feed, all of the um, new MAC valve uh, boost control lines that are going to be braided, they're all going to just have this heat protection across the whole line. Uh, just not going to spare anything, just going to heat, heat sleeve the whole thing and it's just going to be protected the whole way. So <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Anyway, it's a new feed and uh, cut this about the right size for the whole thing. 
we'll start getting these lines in. And then hopefully by then the core and stuff's cooled down enough that I can start dummying that together. Right, oh, so these have just come out nice and peachy. Bloody beautiful. This oven was the best, greatest zero dollar investment we ever made. <laughs> but no, it's come out awesome, really good. Look at that, so much nicer. How much better does that look? So, time to start uh, getting this together and then getting it dummied up. So we can get the turbo together and start dummying stuff up and get our hard line made and <laughs> start getting this together. Hopefully uh, getting it together at this point sort of starts to go a bit quicker now, but that's all done. Very time consuming process, painting, sealing, doing all that, uh, all the stuff we've done to get the manifold on and everything and fixed up. So hopefully now it starts to fall together a bit better. Obviously not the fabrication part, that's tomorrow's job. That's gonna be obviously time consuming, it always is, but getting it together. So there you go guys, at the end of it, perfect little spot for my EMAT port right off the back of the start of the volute, which is going to be perfect, so yeehaw, that's all cleaned up, ready to go, stuck in this on. Uh, we unfortunately don't have any more new studs, um, at least not with 12 point nuts, we'll have a look, we might have some new ones just with 6 points, which should be okay for the design of this turbo. Right, oh guys, so we've got new studs, but didn't have any new nuts for them, so just going to use those old nuts that came off it for now, um, but that's alright. And we've got our EMAP port off the back here, which points a little bit more towards the engine to give you a little bit more room for your V-band, uh, sort of just skimming over the other side of the top of that stud, so hopefully we can skim the fitting in there, I might test fit that now. And then I'll show you how we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna be running a, another sensor, the same as the link one that we put in for our manifold pressure. So, boom. Anyway, I'll go through that with you just because that's a pretty important setup. So between having EMAP as well as turbine speed, or tur I should say compressor speed, because it's not turbine, it's a compressor. Um, so well, they should be doing the same. Yeah, if they're doing a different speed, you probably got something wrong. But anyway, so we've got Turbo speed, EMAP, plus IAT pre and post cooler, we'll be able to sort of have a lot of data to tell us exactly how far we are pushing this thing and how hard we're pushing the turbo. Because at the end of the day, uh, we do want to push this little 3076 pretty hard. Um, and I reckon that we should be able to make it do some pretty cool things and people are going to be like, what? On a 3076? You joking? Just like Darcy's patrol that time. So. Uh, not so much at the moment, but by the time we start actually get some cams in this thing, um, that's what I think we're going to be able to start probably making people pretty wide-eyed as, as to what we can actually do with a, uh, with a 3076 when you're pushing it to the limit. So, so the other thing is, um, I'm not sure what brand this intercooler is. I don't think Brad knows what brand this intercooler is. I think it is just a China intercooler. So we'll be able to get a really good idea of how the intercooler is behaving and how well it's working. And not only that, then if we can bring a company on board to sponsor an intercooler, we can offer them that back-to-back -back runs with the data to back up their product. So uh, having the data allows us to really um, do well for sponsors as well and give them everything that we can for, for giving Brad products and giving the team products and helping the team go drifting. So um, it, that's, that's the other sort of thing that it's about as well. Um, when we remake both charge pipes as well, we're getting rid of the bov. So we're going to make each charge pipe one piece, uh, same as we normally would. And so there's just limited joints, as little as possible. I bought the actual correct size reducer for this as well. From Raceworks, it's over there too. Um, yeah, so they'll both be one piece, uh, which just, again, eliminates possible failure points as much as possible. Anyway, boys and girls, it's quarter to six. So I'm going to shoot home and have some dinner and I'm going to come back after dinner and keep on trucking along and try and get to a lot of this um, lines and stuff nutted out so that tomorrow I can come in and just start smacking through some fab work. Back again, do a bit of night shift. Rex is going to keep going with getting the diner together. Keep trying to smash this out. So first things first, I'm going to get all the fittings we need in the core and I'll show you what we're going to do with the turbo drain. It has to end up being a bit of a convoluted setup just because of what Raceworks had in stock. <laughs> They're out of stock of exactly what I needed, so I improvised with what they did have. So I'll show you that. Um, otherwise, for the water feeds, we're just using what we had in stock. So I think there's two aeroflow fittings there. And the oil feed, I think water feed I just said. Anyway, oil feed comes with the turbo, so I've got to dig that out too. Right, oh, so the AM4 oil feed fitting supplied by Pulsar, which is the correct restriction already for the turbo, so that goes in the oil feed. We've got our Aeroflow-6 water feed 
fittings, which will just find some crash washers and use some thread sealer for those. And then for the drain, we ended up with this Raceworks adapter, which is an A and 8 AORP. Then they didn't have any extended A and 8 to dash 10 flares. So I had to get an A and 8 to A and 8 um, long. And then I've got an A and 8 to A and 10 adapter, which then our hard line will start from there. <laughs> so bit convoluted, bit hard, bit annoying, but uh, did what we had to do to get it over the line uh, in the time that we had. So we'll get this all on the core. Righto guys, that's how we look a little bit dummied up. It's about how it's all gonna sit. As you can see, our feed line is long enough to be well away from that manifold as long as possible. And it also, of course, has our heat sleeving all over it. Uh, you can see how our drain fitting ended up. Um, so that is the extended add dash eight plus the dash 10 cover or adapter I should say. So then from there, down to our drain fitting that we put in at the end of last episode, is going to be a hard line, which is going to be made out of this. So this is just AN10 hard line alloy. Uh, obviously it's just coated in black. And then what we're going to use is these tube nuts and sleeves. And this is a really, really cheap way to do this. So uh, obviously you can buy AN fittings for hard lines that uh, they're sort of like olive, they, they crush and they work really well, which is all well and good, but they're very expensive, especially for AN10. You're looking at quite, quite big dollars, even more expensive than regular stainless braided fittings, which is already quite expensive. But I think, I think they're about, um, about 50 bucks per fitting. Is that retail? Yes. Yeah. I think. Around. So yeah, that's huge. So you're talking about a little bit of hard line plus 50 buck fitting at each end. All of a sudden that little line's worth well over hundred bucks, which is huge. But to buy these, I like two sleeves and two nuts. Um, so that's enough to do what we want to do. So all of a sudden works out a lot cheaper. You just need a special tool to put a 37 degree flare in the end of the hard line. So basically your sleeve goes on well, your sleeve goes into your nut and that all goes on to the fitting and it looks somewhat like that. So that goes on the hard line and then you do a 37 flare on the inside of the nut. And then when you actually do that onto the AN flare, it seals up just like an AN, an AN flare ward. Um, so yeah, really cheap way to do good hard line. Obviously hard line is actually a lot cheaper to buy than stainless braid on its own. Plus these fittings make that really cheap. It's a bit expensive to buy the fitting, uh, the, the tool that you need, but if you're doing a lot of hard line, it's definitely the way to go. It's so much cheaper and so much better. Plus we just really like doing hard line because it, it freaking, it's just so much nicer. Anyway, uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So we'll make this line up now with that dummied in. Uh, once this line's in, we can pretty much work on putting the turbo back together. I oh, know we can't. Can't do that until we start doing fab, so that's all right. We'll get these lines done and then I can probably go home and go to bed. So obviously, as well as this, we've got our regular hardline tool kit, deburrer, tube cutter, plus our bender to make these things just neat and nice and perfectly good. All right, so that's what you end up with. One hardline drain. I'll see if it fits. Hopefully I made it right and it fits properly. But uh, yeah, how easy is that? Completely safe. Don't have to worry about burning, kinks or anything like that. Happy days. Yee ha! One hard line. Keeps it off the manifold all the way down. Safe as houses. Ready to rock and roll. Ready to rock and roll. Right, oh guys, so like always, we're putting a cast alloy elbow straight off the, the turbo, the turbine housing. Oh, sorry, the compressor housing. Because um, that protects everything from this nastiness that's over here. Uh, so, we'll probably. Probably clock that right around to keep it as far away as possible. And like I talked about, probably run that straight as far up to here as I can before we dog leg it to give us enough room for this big four inch pipe to get down the rest of that hole. So we'll have a look and see what we can do. Righto, so I've got that marked where I want that to be, where that's gonna point off the housing. So in the morning I might get Rex to weld that up just because I am hopeless with welding alley, let alone some cast. Um, but I almost feel like well, I should put so I'm straight on it to get it even further away from that manifold because even putting that on it and then putting the reducer straight onto that might even. Hey Rex, how do you feel about welding cast to just alloy, regular alloy? Can try it. It's like with that on there, it's still quite close to that exhaust manifold. Oh. Uh, yeah, I guess so. So I don't know, just a bit of two inch like out to here. 
and give it a go. And then once that's sorted, we actually have to put our turbo speed sensor in this port. Um, so that wiring's gonna have to be fairly protected and everything as well, but we'll sort that out once the housing's sorted. And then we can start actually getting the turbo back together. Then we can look at it actually fitting it on for the final time. Uh, so I test fitted the 1.8 port at the back of the turbine housing as well, and it's gonna work awesome. So that's perfect. Uh, so we're all on the way. Right, oh guys, I got the MAC valve prepped, ready to go. So we've got some actual AN4 fittings to do our complete braided control lines. And I actually put a breather on the other side instead of just an open barb port, which is just a lot better. So uh, there's the MAC valve sorted out so we can start putting our lines together. I just gotta put another one of these fittings in the gate. We can start making our dash four boost control lines. Yee ha. Right, oh guys, so we've got our first braided boost control line. So we've got a right angle off the MAC valve and it comes down and it is also AN4 plus our heat sleeving straight to the wastegate. So that's line one. Should be super safe there. It's actually quite a ways from any heat, but never hurts to have our heat sleeving on it. Um, but yeah, that's number one. And then we'll have another one from here to our charge pipe, which will just be right around here somewhere. That'll be a nice short one. So that'll be our boost control. All sorted, stainless braid, none of this rubber and zip ties and barbs and stuff like that. No, um, no issues there. So nice, reliable boost control. Anyway, guys, um, it's uh, quarter past nine. So it's, um, I'm gonna head home, go to bed and uh, come at this and Charge again tomorrow. Didn't quite get to where I wanted to be today, um, but still made obviously a huge bigger progress on this thing, getting it sorted. So tomorrow we'll basically try and finish it off, try and get all the fab done. Um, it's pretty pretty lofty to try and get all that fab done in a day, as long as as well as what's left to do on the car. Uh, but yeah, if I can get everything done on the fab tomorrow, I'll be absolutely stoked. And then the next day we'll just wire it up and. Um, get it on the big bad dyno which is here now so anyway that's going to be this episode guys i uh, hope you're enjoying it this car is going to be 10 times better when it's done this little little iteration little change um it's going to be huge for this thing and uh we'll just keep on working on getting this car better and better as we go but uh yeah good step forward thanks for watching anyway guys smash like smash subscribe if you're new here and we'll see you on the next one peace out see you bye